Hey everyone, I just wanted to come on and share something with you today. I went downstairs to get some water and as I passed the TV, I saw a story about a guy who was from Cleveland who was performing CPR on a young lady who was involved in a car accident. So this guy, and I saw the story, it went viral on Facebook last week, but it was about a guy, he was driving to work and he witnessed a car accident. And so one of the women didn't have a pulse. And so he began CPR and he did it until paramedics came. And once paramedics came, they said she had a pulse. So this guy possibly saved this woman's life, right? And I thought about how awesome is that? But then I began to think about like, we are all connected. We are all a community, but we don't act as such. Like how many times do you go past something and pretend like you don't see it because it doesn't affect you directly? And I'm not saying this to blame anybody, right? Um, I'm just saying this because I want us to be more aware as to how we need to look out for one another. I know we live in crazy times now, and so you don't know who to trust and who not to trust, but we have to do better. I remember um, there was a Facebook disagreement that I got in, and it's a few years ago that this happened, but someone had written about Chicago. They talked about how many shootings there was this particular weekend and how many deaths it was. And it was a large number, right? And the person, someone came on that post and commented, so what about those calves? What? I was like, is, are they serious? Like, this is a huge problem that is going on in Chicago. Now, mind you, we're only five hours away driving in Chicago, from Chicago, right? So it's not like it's that far and we're that far remo removed. I mean, heck, we exist in the same planet together. So what affects one is going to affect all. But I just couldn't understand why this guy didn't think that he should have a little bit more empathy, right? But nonetheless, we got in this discussion and he pretty much told me that he doesn't know anybody in Chicago. His family is here in Cleveland, so he's not worried about what's going on there. Now, fast forward a few years, and if you live in Cleveland, then you know we're having shootings every day. People can't drive up the street. People can't, we're get, having carjackings. We're having people getting killed at playgrounds. We're having people, home invasions. I mean, it's just ridiculous the amount of crime that's going on. But yet, you didn't care about Chicago. But now that it's home, do you care about it here? Or are you just going to pretend like it doesn't exist here too? Because it's not affecting your family and your, your circle of friends. But, you know, I, I had to go back and I thought about this. And a few, a few weeks ago, I was sitting at home. It was one evening, probably around 7.30. So it was dark outside. And I kept hearing this noise. And I'm like, what is that? Who... It stuck. It felt. It sounded like somebody's wheels just spinning. And we had had a snowstorm, so I thought maybe somebody got stuck in the snow and they were just trying to get out because we do have a little incline and it's kind of hard if the roads are icy to get up it. But nonetheless, um, I go outside and I look and I see it's a car that had run into one of my neighbor's um, bushes in the front of his house. So it's dark outside. I live by woods, so I wasn't going to just go out there because I didn't know what I was going in, you know, walking into. But I get in my car and I drive. And when I get to the car that's stuck, I asked the guy, I said, do you need help? And he's, you know, he was like, I don't know where I'm at. I don't know how I got here. And he's very erratic and irrational acting. And I'm like, I don't know. Okay, what's going on? So I'm like, are you drunk? And he was like, no, I'm not drunk. I'm just getting from work, but I don't know where I'm at. And I don't know why I, how I got here. And so he's just, you know, just pacing around and then his phone rings and he's like, okay, this is my wife. So I hear her say something. And so he's like, can you tell my wife where I, where I am? And so, you know, I proceed to tell her how to get to where he's at. And, um, and so she, she tells me that he's a diabetic and that his blood sugar is low. So I hadn't dealt with a diabetic before who had low blood sugar, but I guess when it happens, they can become very erratic and aggressive. And so she asked me if I had some juice and I just happen to have juice. I'm not a juice drinker, but one of my favorite meals that I make in my crock pot is this black bean sweet potato soup and it uses orange juice as the base. So I happen to have some orange juice. So I ran home and got orange juice from him, for him and I got a pretty big cup and he drank it really fast. And then I talked to the wife again because I'm trying to tell her how to get here because she just doesn't know. Meanwhile, um, she tells me he needs some more. So I go to get some more orange juice for, for him. But he still is acting very erratic. And I'm, I'm kind of scared because 
I don't know if he's going to go off on me or what because he took my little, um, I had those red cups that you put the juice in and he took that, squished it up and threw it on the ground and was just, you know, pacing and just mad. And I'm like, I'm trying to help you, right? And so needless to say, I'm, I'm saying all this because no one else has stopped. I'm not dis not saying that no one else saw this person because I don't know if anyone really came out and saw that someone was stuck in the bushes. But he didn't have anyone helping him when I saw him. He had been there for a while because I I had heard this the um tires going for a few minutes. But had I not come out, this man could have possibly died or been in a diabetic coma, right? Some people, you know, may have called the police to say there's somebody, you know, that is in need. But that may have taken a while because what they didn't know is that this person was diabetic and their blood sugar was low, right? So had it not been that I came out there to help this person, who knows what would have happened? And so I ended up um, staying out there and I met his wife and everything when she finally came. Paramedics had come and they tried to take him, but he wasn't even getting out the car at this point. He was very aggressive at that moment. And so they eventually got him there and took him off. But I say all this because we have to do better as a community. I need you. You need me. Now, I, I get the times that we live in are crazy, as I said before, but we have to just be more diligent and trust God. Now, mind you, it doesn't have to be performing CPR, right? It doesn't have to be you giving orange juice as I did for this guy. It could be a smile that you give to someone who needs it in that moment. It could be a conversation of, hello, how are you doing? And meaning and wanting to know what the answer is, like waiting for that answer, not just saying it because it's a habit for you to say it, but we just have to do better and recognize that we're in this all together. Okay, so that's all I got. But I just thought about that when I saw that story on TV because I thought it was a wonderful story about how we should be to each other. Alrighty, take care. Bye-bye.